Hello everyone and welcome back to the Keep Productive YouTube channel. On today's feature, we have Kylie Stewart with us today. Uh, Kylie is gonna be uh, talking us through her Notion love, also her Notion account as well. Uh, and it's gonna be uh, an exciting tour as well as uh, you know asking her a few questions about how she got into Notion. So, um, you know, I'd love to, for you to introduce yourself, Kylie, and, and also a bit more about your role and, and work you do day to day. Sure. Um, so my name is Kylie, as you mentioned, and I work at Formidable Labs. Uh, we are a JavaScript consultancy, so we work with a lot of other teams, uh, usually as embedded engineers on that team to help them build a thing or uh, refactor or a new initiative in their code base. Um, so I'm a software engineer at Formidable, um, and I work on that. And then I also co-maintain one of our open source libraries for uh, presentation software that's actually written in React. Um, so those are my two primary uh, roles at Formidable. Fantastic. That is, that's well complicated for me because uh, I'm just in the marketing. So uh, <laughs> very, very, uh, very smart. What did you study? Did you go to university and study anything specific? So I went to um, college to study forensic chemistry initially. Uh, I actually dropped out after about a year and a half of that. Um, a lot of the prerequisites just weren't really my thing. Uh, and then I worked at Tesla Motors for a while. I was tinkering with some automation in their sales force uh, and I learned Python. And from there, I went to a three month boot camp in 2016. Uh, and then I was hired at Formidable right after that. So kind of a winding journey into software, but uh, got there. Fantastic. So you must be able to see sort of all the stuff Notion do behind the scenes too, because, because some of your skills sort of overlap yeah. into that. Yeah, I've actually um, recently after uh, I hosted a Notion meetup here in Denver, uh, just about a month ago now. And I, well, I guess a little less than that, almost a month ago. Um, we actually compared some uh, formula approaches to databases at that meetup. So I was actually schooled by a number of other Notion users on um, some of the more intense ways to manipulate a database. Uh, it's actually been really fun to work with those now because you can kind of just work with them the same as I write code in my day to day. Um, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And that's the thing with these meetups is like, like you can learn so much from other people that you wouldn't have known before. So it's such a diverse and lovely community. So it's, it's really good. Um, and uh, maybe you can talk us through your sort of uh, how did you discover Notion and, and, and what sort of got you into it, that sort of origin story? <laughs> I've been really thinking about this because I don't, I can't remember the, the one moment that pointed me to the Notion website. Um, I don't know if it was on Twitter or I know it wasn't internal because we, I brought uh, Notion into Formidable Scope um, after I found out, I don't know, more about it. I started using it. I talked about it at the company and uh, apparently one of our our VPs was already considering using it for a lot of internal documentation. So um, I, I can't remember who spoke to me about it before that, though. Uh, as soon as I was introduced to the software, though, I, I moved pretty quickly. Um, I was a pretty heavy user of Evernote and Google Drive, Dropbox for larger files. So I was doing a lot of like building PDFs that almost kind of imitate the boards that I now make, um, where I'd have a calendar of maybe just that month's activities and things below it. And that was really time consuming to build a lot of the time because I was I wasn't doing it um, in a very efficient way. It was more of like copying and pasting images and and little word art into the calendar um, and then exporting that into like Dropbox or Google Drive and then referencing it in Evernote. Basically just a big mess of uh, effort to try to make my life more efficient. Um, and it was getting frustrating, especially trying to take notes in code uh, specifically where I finally plugged into Notion. You can very easily do inline code. You can make entire blocks. Um, I really like the page structure since you can reference them in other pages. Um, I think you'll see I do that a lot. Uh, <laughs> but overall, like working with Notion, it was kind of just a snowball. As soon as you get familiar with the software, it's so easy to, to scale out. I think I hit my thousand block limit in like two weeks. It was <laughs> quite easily done there yeah and and right. and it's going to be it's going to be quite nice i think cuz um i think like like you mentioned with the meetup is like when people actually show you inside of a notion account you always end up picking up one or two things so hopefully um 
we can dive into yours and gain a lot of value. Um, I'm looking forward to the the formula you mentioned because <laughs> that's one thing I haven't been able to apply. <laughs> yeah, I really I have to polish mine up a little bit um, because yeah, I was trying to manipulate some um, some of the you know how at the bottom of a database you can have the total amounts and unique values. I would oh, love yeah. to be able to affect change there, but um, I spent some time trying to love do it. that this morning <laughs> and couldn't quite get there. Hopefully soon. <laughs> yeah, close. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Right. Um, this is my notion. Um, you can see I have a number of workspace available pages as well as uh, specific to me and my favorites. Um, I'd say I kind of follow like a top level architecture. You can see I have home and I have dev um, instead of having, I don't know, my favorites kind of looks like a mess right now, but I've also favorited some of the boards I want to show you. Um, sure. So all together, I do follow more of a top level structure. I'd say home is where most of the action is. Ever since my company switched over to using um, Notion as well, I've been able to move most of these boards into um, the formidable account. And then I've authorized myself as a guest. Uh, I think you'll see in some places that's happening here too. <laughs> um, uh, so sense. yeah, my work Gmail is an authorized user of some boards within my personal Gmail Notion. That's something that I would like to streamline over time. You can see, there's me. Uh, yep. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Viewing my own board. Um, well, so in general, I this was something I learned about at our Notion meetup. I'll go to the full screen here just so we can see it a little more extensively. Uh, so I have been going by dates, which this is something I'm trying to programmatically solve. So it will assign just based on the given date, um, mm -hmm. setting this to a formula. I've been a work in progress. Uh, but setting it to a formula and then pulling in the date prop and then determining if it's a Monday, Tuesday, or multiple days uh, so that hopefully I don't have to do so much manual work yeah. over this. And then obviously I put all of my calendar events in, um, which I've heard the argument that this is a little redundant given I have an actual calendar. Um, I work at Formidable with between clients and my own personal computer. I typically have two different computers I'm working on. I kind of use this as the one calendar that I can refer to without authorizing a client computer into my own iPod account or something like that. Um, so this has actually been a more streamlined way for me to look at my week. Uh, and then the current week is filtered down to just be within this week. And uh, I'll show you what this work in progress board looks like, but basically that it's a finalized item. Um, so I do have a few views for the same board. Um, which is probably the thing I like to utilize the most. The databases are just such a handy tool and being able to visualize that data in so many ways is great. Um, so I do have this works in progress board. This is mostly for trips where I haven't finalized. Like I know I'm going to do the thing around this time, but I haven't picked like know exactly where. I do a lot of backpacking. So knowing that this weekend is one that I've set aside for it is important for me planning the rest of my schedule, even if I don't know where it is yet. Um, and then same for conference travel. These are things that I'm still ironing out that I want to hike after this conference. I'm trying to pick the best flight time for that. And that's why it's still in the work in progress here. Um, I really like this work in progress view because these are trips that I've committed to without either I bought the ticket or I bought the hotel or I still haven't figured out uh, if I want to fly in on Monday or Sunday. Those are things that might be ironed out over time. So I have at least this one view to look at, uh, especially for like October travel and vacations. Um, knowing in advance that I'm going to be looking at that in the year is important. I think I do a lot of high level year visualization. I can show you this 2019 yeah, board. Yeah, I, I, I really like that. I haven't seen I've, many people use it as that. So that's quite nice. I just introduced this work in progress uh, property so I could have this view and I'm really pleased with it especially since you can kind of assess against the negative so only check on the ones that are still ambiguous and then uh, everything else kind of proceeds as normal and then i love that you can hide that column entirely uh so mm -hmm. it's not even visible in the calendars where it doesn't really matter if these are things that i already did um in this month and this is super handy for like the work events that i need to duplicate i can just mm -hmm. go in and you know select the new date from this table view instead of the card view. Uh, that's also been a little bit easier. So I really, I've been, this was something that 
was also discussed at the Notion meetup. Um, I was using just little to-do tasks before this, and yeah. that was a lot of redundancy too. So being able to create blocks for each thing um, that are within a database is a lot easier to do. Yeah, and, just, and you know, I re- sorry, I, I was going to say, I really, too, no. <laughs> no, I really like the way that you use the the covers as well as the the page content. That that looks really nice in it. It sort of bolds it bolds it out a bit, like the the hiking um, mm-hmm. one you've got there to Mount Intero, which I've, ne- I've never heard of, but it's a uh, it looks lovely. That's that that's the thing, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's a fourteen thousand foot peak, and actually, this would be my first time going that high on a mountain, so I'm really quite excited. But I agree, this is exactly why I like the covers. It doesn't matter, like I don't need a cover for PTO, but um, mm-hmm. for the actual event, and as you saw in like the future events here, I have a lot of more remarkable things with a cover Mm. um so absolutely something that i'm looking more forward to uh i like to give an image for those just because they do stand out so much more it also kind of makes the work items uh fall into place a little bit cleaner um it's less prominent my dog's birthday he gets a cover (laughs) but yeah absolutely (laughs) it's the the more prominent activities i like to put a cover on Um, yeah that's really smart yeah that was uh that was actually something in the like last year of changes that Notion has rolled out. Um, I know they used to default to having the page cover and then the default change, but I never opened up properties to see that this was an option to tall. So maybe a month ago, uh, someone showed me that you can actually just do the preview by cover. So I got to bring back all of those other uh, card based tables that I have here, like the, the cards and I get to bring the cover photos back in. So. That's exciting. I love that. Yeah. Fantastic. I also like that it is selective. It doesn't like default to just a gray box for the ones without it. That's another. Yes. I'm glad that they handle that so well. So that's how I handle my week ahead. Um, that's brilliant. Yeah. So, so it's mainly for your tasks and calendar side of stuff, like events that won't move, events that you're planning, and task management in general. Yeah, for example, um, this past Saturday, I knew I had a bunch of things I wanted to do, but I didn't want to go about them in my standard to do format. So I just mm. made like, uh, just a bunch of chores, which I actually didn't oh, brilliant. check things off. Uh, but I did, I did reference <laughs> it throughout the day that that was what I needed to do. Um, yeah. So it's really handy to be able to, yeah, so put that on like my whole Saturday. So it's the one item I might have for that day. It's fantastic. Um, in general, I do still, I import this board into my base camp, which is basically how I might start my day. Um, I can kind of look at the things I still need to do. Um, somebody mentioned the web scraper and creating a reading list with that. So instead of just trying to remember to look at that later, I can just physically write it down in the backlog and, um, move it through as I finish them. I also, when I'm done with things, move them all into an archive. I'm not going to open that up because I'm sure it's just a pit of nonsense. But it's <laughs> nice to just have a place where it exists that's not the uh, overall like trash within Notion. Um, yeah. So I can reference other to-dos later. Or maybe if I thought I deleted something instead of actually checking it off because I can be kind of scatterbrained, uh, it's good <laughs> to be able to have that check. Um, and then that's I can great. move in the backlog i have a couple pages as well i have like housekeeping which is basically cleaning up a bunch of my dev folders on my computer i have so many work in progress uh projects that aren't finished uh so i'm tracking them in that housekeeping folder uh and then i have a table of my doctor's information because i never had a good place to check that in before so i just link to the doctor when i need to schedule um i need to get my annual physical done and uh, I can just link in and know that his information is stored in there instead of having to kind of crawl through my contacts. Um, so I like making things super accessible to the thing they're tied to, which is why linking those pages. You might not want to <laughs> show everyone my doctor's information. Yeah, um, I don't know. But, <laughs> but, but, uh, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't call him, please. No. <laughs> uh, Stop. <laughs> yeah, it is nice to be able to link to the person, though, or the thing. Mm, um, definitely, definitely. I think I've shown you what that like this breakdown I, looks I, like. Yeah, I really like that, that. That's that's something that like I don't think a lot of people do because obviously you have like a home that obviously has all of your uh, main area and items in, but a base camp yeah. is something I haven't actually seen. So I quite like that I, concept. 
wanted to be able to see my week while also looking at my to do's so I have an idea of like everything going on on a given day and uh, viewing it as like a single base camp has been helpful. I think I mentioned I do bring tables all over the place. Um, and that's something I kind of want to solve with the more formulaic approach for uh, linked tables. I'll show you one gap where that still exists uh, just because of this recent yeah, sure. week ahead change. Um, oh, and also in my base camp here, people are telling me things I need to read or watch all the time. So these are the things that <laughs> I need to watch or read. I made these kind of on the fly, so they haven't been updated in a while, but um, these are all just books that people have thrown at me and like, you can't forget about this one. And there are obviously apps to track it, but it's been really handy to just, I'm literally going to add it to my list here. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. And uh, it's all in one place ready for you. Yeah. Yeah. And I can clean it up or keep it as messy as I need to. Um, I'm really bad about watching TV that's recommended to me, but I'll get better there. <laughs> um, <laughs> to the same tune of uh, things that are being planned. I guess this also tunes into why I, I don't watch so much TV. I spend a lot of time moving <laughs> things around in Notion. Um, I like to put the very formal travel plans in here. And this is something that I'm thinking I can pull in from my um, current week or week ahead database. So over time, this travel plans might just be linked to a certain property within that database and I won't have to duplicate the information. But this does have um, where I will put like anticipated costs and mm. uh, like other details about that trip. And maybe I know I'm gonna have to plan for $200 of dog sitter charge. I can kind of look at it at the end of all of this, I'm going to be spending that much on just dog sitters uh, just for the next three trips. So maybe I don't, maybe I want to see if a friend can get the dog instead or, or something like that. Um, so this travel plans database is where a lot more fine detail goes into each board. Um, like I said, I'm hoping to link this to just one property within my other board so I don't have to duplicate it. Uh, but from a high level, this has made it really easy for me to look at my year. Um, wow. I know one of the most difficult things about planning vacation is like how soon or far apart from the last trip do you want to make it? Um, same with holidays and, and friends coming into town. From a high level, I don't want to look at every month so hands on with my like week ahead board, being able mm. to just see like my dad visited. So I needed to keep in mind those dates for any other thing that I planned. Uh, but I didn't really have anything else huge going on in April. So I can just kind of drag and drop items around and then I can do what happened in the past uh, and I'm going to collapse them as those months go by. So this will only get cleaner and it'll be easier for me to look ahead. Um, this is also originally designed just to figure out how many hours I'm going to be rolling over uh, mm. for vacation. So mm. last year I rolled over way too many and I almost came to the point where I lost some in that transition. So this was all an effort to avoid doing that again. Uh, and oh, actually wow. utilize my PTO. I've I've never so. seen I've never seen because uh, uh, normally when you go about planning your year, you do it very linearly. Like a lot of people mm -hmm. do that, like you know, all the way to here. But this is a really like uh, refreshing approach to it, and it's colourful. It's got a lot of um, information about the hours used. I really. I really like it and, and to the point where I'm, I'm going to be having to steal a few concepts from you. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would invite you to do it. That would be considered a success. Um, this has been, I mean, a really, it's exciting for me. I get really excited about <laughs> different yeah, ways to view that amount of information. So that would be yeah. exciting if you, if you do use some of these methods yeah, here. Definitely. Um, I like the color too. I like being able to, this is a little bit more easily manipulated than a database. So mm -hmm. I can actually, I mean, I could just put spring is coming or something. Uh, you know, yeah. I expect the temperatures to be around this, any kind of just quick reference information for my year. Um, it's also been easy. This was originally in September, super easy to move it mm -hmm. over. And then I know I'm actually going to need to add about 24 hours to my expected use for that time. Um, yeah. It just makes it really easy to, to, to modify those numbers without all of the formality of a database. So, yeah, I really I like, like it. it. I really like it. It's good. Awesome. Um, Fantastic. Yeah, so this is something that has been super helpful for planning just everything in my life. 
Um, this is a really straightforward goals list. Uh, mm -hmm. I've toggled a few different ways to do this, where it was a database and then you expanded the item and that was going to have the details of how to do it. Um, mm -hmm. This has been really easy for me to look at. This already happened. This is booked, but like I know that I have, you know, one more meetup that I want to book before um, I'll have considered this goal accomplished. And this is just a super clean view to look at how that's going. And then like submitting to certain places, I can put that in here. Uh, and then it's not so cluttered where I'm looking at just a bunch of open to do's. I'm more looking at like, I'm at two of three of my goal for goal one uh, and one of two for two. So this was something I was, I'm pretty happy with the, the final, um, the final layout on it because it's just so easy to look at. And uh, I might use this for other goals in general. This has been mostly for development, but um, I'm like working on my 5K time. I'm hoping to get to a 10K. Maybe this is a format I can use for other steps forward. Mm. Um, I just like not having to look at the super cluttered to do. Yeah, no, that's, it's really nice. Uh, I use a gallery view in it. I don't think it is that you have to, obviously with the gallery review, you have to click in. So that sort of, it's not as front and center as this. This is a really nice mm -hmm. way of viewing it. So yeah, that's brilliant. Fantastic. I also don't view myself as adding, um, you know, a fourth and fifth large overarching goal before the end of the year. Mm. So it, it seems for another reason, not something I want to use such a database for. Um, and then I can archive this page and then make a 2020 and just look at them as entirely separate instances instead of some kind of overlapping. If I don't meet one of these goals, I don't want to be bothered by it next year. If that makes any That's sense. it. Yeah, it does definitely. <laughs> um, another board that's a little bit more relevant to dev um, meetups. So I go to a lot of meetups to learn things, to, to network and um, actually taking notes at those meetups sometimes is really difficult to remember to do. So I've, mm. you can see, I haven't really been to one that has, I've taken notes at uh, <laughs> since March, but <laughs> in general, I like to throw all of my notes into just a single page. So this is per talk. Um, and I can add just all the notes I need and referencing them back later is a lot easier than what I was doing before, which is just kind of one long winding Evernote document. Mm. Uh, and then I have like the 2018, which this was kind of in my earlier stages of Notion. So I was still taking notes in my code editor and saving them. And I was actually dragging and dropping those readmes in and the markdown was filing into Notion just fine. Uh, so that was, a, that was a big selling point for me is copying and pasting yeah. markdown and finding it formatted just without any issue. Um, so taking notes this way has been super helpful for me. Uh, another large section of my Notion is hikes and planning hikes and everything about hikes. Um, and this is another board that is probably now obsolete given the new week ahead approach. Um, I am like working on kind of just an overview of how I'm getting rid of the these boards and opting in for that programmatic linked database. Um, so I hopefully I'll have an overview of how this is accomplished. I'm confident I can just import all of my hike data to a single calendar here. Um, so we'll see how that plays out, but this has been just purely for looking at the hikes I'm doing uh, and nothing else. And, and out of curiosity, just to, to touch on that, obviously, um, like that's something I found after, I think it's almost maybe like a when you've used it for like more than a year, you find that other pages go sort of, you know, almost like they go redundant and then you have to sort of blend them into your core use. Um, how often do you find you do like a spring clean or even just doing sort of like redundancy updates? <laughs> uh, I kind of see it as an ongoing refactor. As I'm working mm -hmm. at any given time, I will sometimes make a note to myself that I should, I mean, you saw my to-do of maybe move your reading list into Notion. Right now it's in pocket, so that's its own refactor. But refactoring the board specifically, um, mm -hmm. I'd say every three months or so, there's kind of a big change in my Notion setup at this point. Uh, yeah the last big one where I split up home and dev a little bit more specifically was in February. So pretty recently yeah. I gutted all of these pages. Um, I had been making pages within pages and I decided to check them all into a top level directory. Really mm -hmm. pleased with this layout, but obviously as you mentioned, it's kind of an ongoing effort to keep things satisfying. Uh, not even that they don't look good or they're not efficient, but 
your own wants and needs change as an individual. And maybe you really liked mm-hmm. the way you had the columns, but now you're super into rows. Um, that's kind of the beauty of this tool, though, is that it's so easy to drag and drop those items around. Uh, yeah. That's probably the thing I love the most. I'm super indecisive. So I think I do that refactor all the time. <laughs> so being able yeah, to do that it. with ease. I think huge. that's what yeah. I think that's what's nice about it though is like uh, I always find I do it every three or four months roughly and and it's almost like seeing a capture of progress at least because you're like oh remember when I ha- used to have it like that remember when I used to have it like that it's sort of like you're always refining it and that's what's so nice about Notion so yeah I, that's a really good bit of advice there. I uh, I'm kind of utilizing so I'm working on getting a, a domain so I can just share this notion or this Denver page with everyone else. I'm also toying around with what kind of permissions I want to allow. Uh, like maybe we'll have a okay. core contributing group of four or five people and then everyone else makes requests to that group to add it. So I don't have to make a brand new, very expensive workspace or anything. <laughs> um, but we are trying to use notion for our meetup in general. Uh, and right now I made this page of icons you know, where uh, we have like some dev tools, and these are all That's notion awesome. perfect. So they have like enough of a buffer. Um, the whole goal is to make it easier for people within the group to use some of the, there's a white icon in there, but you can't really tell until you go into dark mode. Um, <laughs> my goal was to be able to download all of them at once. I don't know what's happening. Okay, Zoom is doing its own thing. Uh, but yeah, so <laughs> I'm working on building this website out for other notioners to use. Um, and these are all like, I, I mean, you can see, I go a little crazy with my icons. Um, I've got quite a few that I've, oh, I'll show you a board where a lot of these came into play. Um, yeah. mushroom and steak. I have a recipe board that's very thorough that I would oh, love to show sick. you. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yes. So this grocery board is, no. this was probably the biggest, uh, selling point for me into notion was making this easier. Um, so I have in this page of groceries, I, at any point I'm looking at my week, I know what I'm going to make. Mm. Um, I have some salmon and quinoa. I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. Uh, so I don't need to link to a recipe, but here I can basically link to, let's say I want to do, um, I'm trying to remember. No, let's search chicken. It's, it'll bring something up. Uh, so let's say this day I want to do, I'm going to do chicken tortilla soup. So I'll go in here. Oh, I've made sick. cover photos. Uh, I've got tags on it. I haven't tried this one yet. I have the link from where I originally pulled the information. But in general, I've pulled a prep time, cook time, a shopping list, and instruction. And this is the fantastic part. I can copy this over, go back to groceries, um, and just oh, do this. And good. this has been the best, especially when I'm shopping for multiple things. Like I know I have these items, maybe. So I know I need three cloves of garlic. Um, Let's say that I'm also getting the ingredients for this one. I can combine those ingredients as I see them duplicated. Um, So garlic here, I'm just gonna get a full knot of garlic, Uh, but you can see that it's easier for me to see at a top level. And as you get rid of items that you already have. So we have two limes for that one, but I know I saw limes up here somewhere. or I thought I did. Anyway, the goal being I can see everything side by side. Mm. Uh, and then once I actually clean these up, I often will just, you know, take out the measurement itself when I finally add it to my list. But I know I need these two things. So they're going to go into my dry goods list. Um, uh, looks like I need a lot of limes. So <laughs> I'm going to put three limes and I can just put it into produce. But basically, from that, I'll sort through all of these items I supposedly need to cook the things I want to cook this week, add them in, and then, like, I know I'm running out of half and half soon, so that can go in at any time. And then when I get to the grocery store, this is typically already wrapped with whatever I need for that next trip. There have been times I've planned all of these uh, a little bit further in advance, so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and maybe I don't want to pick up those groceries yet. I can still link to that page um, and just pick out, I'm going to... I'm sure I'm just pick a thing, but uh, I can still link to that page, still know that it's coming up, and then copy the shopping list into this is usually the approach I have. Um, let's say I know I'm going to need to go shopping on Wednesday too, and I'll just drop it in here. So it's not forgotten, uh, and I can look at it just further down the week, and it's also out of view. 
Um, so this has been my favorite way to manage my shopping list. And it's, yeah, it's so much easier, especially for like yeah. the items that I'm not sure. Like I still have half of a jalapeno from last time. I'm going to leave it at the top of the list. And then whenever I'm mm. at home, I can check the fridge and see if it's still good. Or, or maybe I do need to pick up a new uh, jalapeno after all. Um, this dragging and dropping of my shopping list has been the easiest in the world for tracking all of those things. Yeah, I really like that. And that's something I do like in Todoist already. Um, mm-hmm. And obviously like being able to just do it like – organize it in that sort of fashion saves you time when you're in the store like every sort of aspect so that's really really neat it's really i've neat. also acquired a bunch of coupons recently so just putting the name <laughs> of the product that i know because i forget i have a coupon for a thing until that's it's good. in the it's list and idea. then i can remember i actually have that <laughs> so every coupon one is colored right yeah just orange lovely um and then I can get rid of oh, those so more simple. quickly. But also I can look at them and say, okay, well, I don't really need crackers this week. So I'll just pick it to next week and leave it in the dry goods mm-hmm. section for now since it has a coupon. Um, that is amazing. Yeah, this has been the most exciting board for me. The recipe box was yeah. the first board I made and I made it publicly accessible. Um, I think I mentioned I how think... the photos were a big part of my databases. This yeah. was one that that was the case for me. I think I remember, I think that's the first time I saw your sort of work online is like, I think you came, you came up and I, on my Twitter feed and it was like a really colourful board with like tons of recipes. I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> it's brilliant. It's like a uh, notion. And recipes notion. are, <laughs> yeah, this was, this was, this was when I, I thought maybe talking about notion would be cool. I figured if I got this much enjoyment out of doing it, I think I also mentioned those really custom icons. That might've been the most time consuming part was like finding a churro PNG, removing the backgrounds and putting it into my board. Um, yeah. It's dedication right there. <laughs> a little bit. It's a little over the yeah. top, but uh, you know, I save them. And then if anyone needs an artichoke uh, PNG, I have a board now where you can download it. <laughs> I love that. Um, should we make it accessible okay. in the in the description? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right? Uh link into yeah. the yeah. That seems yeah. logical. That does, yeah. <laughs> oh man. There are That's so many things. Brilliant. I think this I need to this notion board itself is like the most meta of boards. It's my notion board of notion boards. I have to oh publish the notioners board. Uh I have like the future blogs of trying to actually clean up my description. Oh, yeah. As you can tell, I get kind of excited and just talk a lot about Notion. I'm trying to make that less <laughs> rambly. Um, and then events, and I have to actually do some other things relevant to the Notion Pro stuff. And then this is the, the front-facing one. They used to be on the same board. Fantastic. Next to them. Well, yeah. I, think, I don't think this is going to be the last time you're on Keep Productive because we're going to definitely have you on again to dive deeper into the topics because I think it's... I could go I for hours. So that good. yeah that's it like we could have like an hour webinar this would be great um yeah. <laughs> but i think it i think what i think what people would find value in as well is the the calendar side of stuff so maybe like even how you went about building it from scratch would be a cool feature but uh I mean, of course we'll talk about that separately um but that this is amazing this is this is a great little and, and obviously how did the how did the uh the denver meetup go you've only had one so far right We've had one so far. We are in the works of figuring out if we should do another lunch or after work um, time schedule, but we have a location set for the next one. Um, I love it. So it went really well. It was exciting. Uh, I had stickers, so I tried to entice Notion enthusiasts in with those. Um, (laughs) And just the ideas that went around were really interesting. I wrote this approach to the weekly planning immediately after that meetup because I saw someone else's board and wanted to oh, kind of brilliant. duplicate what I had seen. And I was talking to other people in my work about it. So I was like, all right, I'll just summarize a little thing. And this was actually where that um, the week ahead board started. It's kind of mm. cool that you can see it was a lot different <laughs> the first mm. time I made it. Um, but just doing more details about the approach, I learned so much from some of the presentations. Um, and this was also kind of fun. We got to talk about like, what is your job title and how do you use it? We had a founder uh, of his own startup and he moved his entire internal team into it. So they're using it as like a customer management software. They're using it for kind of like a daily sprint 
tracking of what each of the members of the startup is doing. Um, yeah. They're all in, and he was really excited to talk about that. So that was really oh, wow. cool to hear. Uh, and he was ready with questions of how other people might have implemented these these common business approaches. Uh, the CMS mm-hmm. in particular is something that I think you see duplicated over and over again, but just different every time. He, uh, he had some really pointed questions that made me think a little differently about the CMS uh, and like how, I don't know, a startup founder is using it. Um, these are all of like his first clients ever and he's tracking information about the people he's meeting, the names of everyone. So anyone else in the company can click on that and learn everything he's learned about their client. Um, really, really interesting. And there was a student who said that from the Notion kickoff, he watched this. Uh, the Did you watch the video of um, this gentleman I've here? I've got it actually saved, going through? but it's, it's the tree, the, the, the detailed the forest, tree, the, right? No. Yeah. That's, yeah, I mean, that's so crazy. many trees. It's really interesting, though, because just looking at what he dedicates an entire page to had us discussing, like, what the hierarchy of pages actually looks like, how important a page needs to be to be its own page. Um, We got pretty meta with a lot of these notion discussions. I had a really good time. I'm excited about the next one. Yeah, this is is such a good community. And and the thing is, like, um, everyone's so, like, willing to share their own setups and, and be able to learn. So I think that's what's... That's what's so fantastic. Um, it's also so fluid. So people are kind of always learning and adapting the software for different purposes, but the purposes are shared across a massive user base. I think that makes it yeah. a really cool community because people are, are showing you the eight different ways they accomplish the same task. And that's really awesome. Definitely. Definitely. Um, Kylie, are you part of our Facebook group, the Notion Facebook group, by any chance? I'm actually not on Facebook. Um, oh, okay. But there are so many That's, groups. You wouldn't be on it then. <laughs> Facebook that it makes me want to use it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, in solidarity, I deleted it a little over a year ago, and I only miss it. Group. <laughs> group that's it. Me. No, that that's the only thing. No, I, 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 I'm, I'm the same on Instagram. I think I just don't have it. I, mean, I have it. That's but the one I, I have, which it. is still Facebook. So I really like <laughs> should yeah, keep up and that's either it. commit to all or nothing, but. Yeah, go go hard or go home. Um, I, I, I really I really appreciate you taking the time out, Kylie, for this. Um, I think your layout and the general sort of thesis around it was really well explained. I think people are going to take a lot away from this. So thank you uh, for taking the time out. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for giving me a platform to talk about Notion. I'm always, always interested in sharing ideas. Sorry, my headphones just died. Oh, perfect. Oh, yep. Oh, oh yep. Same. That's <laughs> same like five percent. So oh, sorry. Right. Okay. I can still. I can... Okay. There we go. We'll carry on from there. Sorry, uh, but we'll we'll definitely get you on again because uh, I think your insights are fantastic. But and and also, okay. uh, if you okay. want to send me the information about the Denver group, just let me know because I'll post it in the Facebook group uh, okay. on your behalf in okay. case there's any people from Denver uh, hanging around yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, that would be amazing. I would really appreciate that. Um, fantastic. Well, I'll talk to you soon. And I will send you, whenever I finalize this uh, post about the formulas that I'm trying to implement a little more formally in my formally databases, in my I'll database send, you send you that over. Send you that over. Check it out too. Check it out too. Yes, please. That would be fantastic. Thank you, Kylie. Cool. Yeah, and, of course. Uh, Thank I'll, you. I'll-